We've been through the best units in Warhammer 3, but what are the worst? Let's list about that. Coming in at 10th place, we have the Soul Grand of Slanesh. Now, this is specifically for the Demons and Warriors of Chaos. Now, I know in the video of the best units, I said all Soul Grinders are good, and while that may be kind of true, the Slanesh version is pretty much pointless unless you have no other choice. So, if you're playing as Slanesh, it's fine, but if you're playing as the Demons or what can the Warriors of Chaos get it? Basically, if you're playing as anyone else as the choice of the other ones, it's not really any point in taking it. So, quite like the rest of the Soul Grinders, it actually does fine in melee, and it isn't actually a bad unit. But it is the only one to have zero ranged capabilities, including Khorne, which does have it, but it's kind of hard to use, but I digress. You'd also think being the Slanesh version means it has the best charge, right? Wrong. While it may have the devastating flanker, meaning charges to the back do big damage, baseline the Khorne version also has more charge bonus, so just go with that for more consistent charging. Now, it's not really a bad unit, but if you put it up against literally any of the other three options you have, it never comes out on top. This is a pretty short entry to the list, but what do you want me to say? It's good, just not good enough to choose from any of its compatriots, and to me, that's almost worse than being just a bad unit. Coming in ninth place, we have the Dread Quake Mortar. Now, I know two units in a row that are considered pretty good. Colonel is bad. I'm going to comment my angie comment down below. Well, first of all, I'll say that engagement to the bank partner. And uh, second of all, I'm not saying the Dread Quake is bad. In fact, it's probably a little bit overpowered. I mean, have you seen these shots land? Sheesh, disrespectfully, or whatever you kids are saying these days. But quite like the Soul Grinders of Slanesh, another unit exists which makes taking this humble mortar entirely pointless. May I present to you the same unit, but being pulled by a choo-choo train. <laughs> it still has the same massive ranged firepower of the base unit, but now has passable speed and decent charging ability should it run out of ammo or be caught out by flankers. Is it much more expensive? Yeah, a little bit. Do I care? Not really. Endgame Chaos Dwarfs swim in resources, so I don't really think paying a little bit more to have your murder lobber towed around by a freight train is really asking too much. If you can afford both, why would you ever go for the base Dreadquake Mortar? It's literally just the same unit, but worse. Coming in eighth place, we have Giants, and this goes for all of them. I know some people have been saying that Giants have been fixed and they're actually really good now, and I'm sorry, I still think they suck for pretty much every faction that has access to them. Now, it's half that they're bad and half that better options are always there, so let's go through every faction and offer alternatives real quick. Beastmen have like five other choices of better monsters like the Psygore, Jabberslife, or Gorgon. Greenskins get a spider or the idol. Norskins get mammoths. Ogres get stonehorn. Warriors get a dragon, Ogre Shagoth, and one of the like 25 other massive monsters they have these days. While giants may seem good on paper with a frankly absurd HP pool and massive weapon strength, they're let down by their speed and honestly their shape. I hate to fat shame them, but their shape really nerfs them into the ground. They're super tall and fairly wide, so are an easy tag if any ranged unit to shower damage onto, no problem. Add on to that, they don't have the most armor in the world, and it's a respite for a rapid death, even versus the weakest of weak ranged troops. If you can completely shut down enemy ranged, then they are actually pretty decent, but if you can, it is a waste of unit slot. But hey, at least they'll take a ton of ammo down with them. Coming in seventh place, we have Depth Guard. So we've been over some pointless units, but these might honestly take the cake. So the Vampire Coast playstyle is of course all about gunpowder. You get the shooty men to shoot enemies, and you win. This gives them a playstyle where melee troops are honestly a little bit pointless, since you want your gunners to have clear lines of sight rather than having a line of melee troops protecting them. And if you do want a line before your long range ranged troops, then use some short range ranged troops to make sure enemies can't even get close enough to deal any damage. So this quote unquote elite front lines unit is just a bit of a question mark. Even if I do want some front lines, I want a meat shield that is literally just there to slow enemies down and likely get friendly fired to death with gunfire and artillery. But it doesn't matter because like I said, they're a meat shield. And even if I for some reason wanted a real front line, why would I ever use these over the pole arm depth guard who not only have more damage, but also more defense. Anti-infantry bonus, you might say. Good point, apart from the fact that it's literally five bonus damage with only about one of it being armor piercing. So they have two tiers of pointlessness. So never take them, no matter what your playstyle is as the vampires. They simply do not fit in the game whatsoever and need a serious tweak to something to make them even slightly relevant, especially for a late game unit. Coming in sixth place, we have Eshin Triad. Admittedly, this might just be a unit that I don't get, in which case I'm sure the comments will point it out very nicely, just how wrong I am. But what can I do? They seem pointless to me, so they're going on the list. So let me make sure I'm getting this right. They have anti-large and charge defense, which makes them seem like a front lines holder to keep enemies back. But they have low armor, defense, as well as stalk and concealment bombs. So they're meant to be a, what, stealth front lines unit? If you're using stealth, surely you're sneaking up on something. But what are they going to sneak up on and to use their anti-large? They're going to get a weird flank off on some cav? No, that's obviously not going to happen. They just seem like a bunch of features from other units mixed in a pot, and the result is something that I have literally no idea how to use properly. Unless you're playing a snitch, just leave them alone, because there are better options, both cheaper and more expensive, which will do the exact same job leagues better without all the added confusion. Just over the midpoint of our list, and here we have the Mounted Yeoman. These are just terrible. Bretonia are, of course, the Cav Specialist faction of Warhammer 3, and to be fair to them, later on their Cav are top tier and can easily fill out your entire army roster 
if you want them to. However, their cab roster is not without its poopy pants stinky units, and that brings us to the Mounted Yeoman. Now yes, they're cheap, and they're meant to be used early on when you have no other choice, but even when you have no other choice, I'd probably have the choice of just not having them. They are just simply terrible. Hardly any charge bonus, hardly any mass, pitiful melee stats, they're fast, yeah, but all that speed really does is rush them to an early grave. Going against anything but the weakest of weak units, and they will turn to dust in moments, so I'd honestly just stick with literally anything else. Even the missile variants are better, at least they can do some peppering damage before they get taken out in seconds. Just get that first vow done as fast as possible and take something better. It's worth the time and cost, because these guys are just money down the drain. Coming in fourth place, we have the Zhangzhou Wardrum, also known as the Wardrum Wardrum. Would you believe a unit from a recent, very well received DLC been on a worse units list? I can. Now, look, I can see the argument for these things because the buffs are nice and have a large range, but aside from the buffs, they do actually nothing. So they can't fight at all. So literally just buff machines for your army. But you know what else can buff your army? Lord skills, uh, heroes. Hell, even the war compass is a better choice. At least it has some bound spells and has utility just outside of its magical buffs. The wardrum wardrum is just big dumb, big dumb, and I will not be convinced otherwise. Add on the fact it's a pretty chunky unit, so enemy range can fire at their leisure and almost certainly hit. And it's a big expensive buff box that if you ask me, it's just a waste of time. Coming in third place, we have Feral Cold Ones. Now, these things have been stinky for years and have never improved one bit. So they're fast. And thus concludes the list of things that they're actually good at. They can get around enemies easily and charge into range to the backs of the front lines pretty easily. However, they seem to rampage for pretty much any reason they want. Take like 2% damage, rampage time. Oh no, I lost one leadership, rampage time. Oh no, I was running into balance, stubbed my toe on a rock. I'm gonna go on a rampage. Now it's fine if you only have to worry about the one unit, but when you have a whole army and like a third of them can rampage, it quickly turns into a shit storm of units going off and fighting wherever they like, and let's be honest, dying in the process. Sometimes it's not a problem. Like if a Carnosaur goes on a rampage, it can win most battles it's gonna get himself into. With these units, however, even against zombies, they've got a 50-50 chance of somehow pulling a loss out of their ass. So to summarize, go on a rampage at the drop of hats, and they will likely lose it to whatever combat they get themselves into anyway. Where do I sign up? Never use them for any reason. They're a no good, very bad, stinky winky unit. Coming in second place, we have the Carrion. Honestly, it feels like the Carrion have been buffed. I swear back in the day, they lost to Felbats, but here, they managed to win. Great job, guys. That being said, against uh, pretty much anything else, yeah, they are pretty sucky. They lose in combat versus almost anything, so if they come against a fairly persistent ranged unit, they're going to struggle. They're really squishy, but also for some reason have fairly large hitboxes for these types of units, making them easy to be taken out either in melee or from ranged. Plus, if they get stuck in melee, good luck pulling them out quick when they get trapped inside a unit of zombies. It's crazy to me how they can be the only option for anything that flies in a faction, and they're still not worth it. You're better off completely ignoring the skies rather than taking these guys. Hey, that rhymed. Just use land flankers to do the same job and you'll have a vastly better time, I promise you. And in the number one position, we have the basic corpse cards. Of course, I had to pick something from my favorite faction to be the worst and the corpse cards really, really takes the cake. It is a truly terrible unit and that terribleness has layers. So first of all, let's look at its raw combat performance. Okay, that's it, it has not. No good stats to be seen, giant hitbox. So if you send this thing to fight, it will lose Pretty much no matter what it's up against. Okay, so if it can fight, then it has auras. Of, you know, it's got buffs, of course. Yes, it has one aura that slightly increases unit stats in a fairly small radius. Uh, not great, but it's an early game unit. What do you expect? Well, allow me to introduce you to one of three options. You have the two other corpse cart units, which come with bonus effects as well as this baseline effect, making them an instant pick since they are the same unit, but only better. I've heard you. If you don't want to use the extra unit slot, then allow me to introduce you to Necromancer Lords, which can get them and better versions as mounts. Heroes can do this too, actually, so four alternatives if you think about it, and more if you think about the other variations that the Lords and Heroes can get. There is no reason to ever go for the basic corpse cart. It cannot fight, the buff is weak, you can get bare units, you can get better units with that terrible buff and even more effects, and it won't take much longer or cost more to do it. Especially with how strong the Vampire Count's economy is at the moment, just never take the basic corpse cart. It is literally never worth it. If you get one in your army through Confederation or when you spawn in, just disband it. It's wasted upkeep and then get a better one later. And that's my list for the worst units in the game. Did I miss something you think should have made it? Let me know in the comments below. Like, subscribe, and if you want to know what the best units in game are, then check out this video here to see my top 10.